Hi, everyone. Morgan here at JotForm. Welcome to today's session, What's New with JotForm Tables. This is the first in our snack break series of webinars where we're just going to be giving you quick updates from what's new with us. Uh, you may be aware that JotForm has several teams of developers, which is part of why we are able to roll out new things to you, big new things to you fairly regularly. Uh, you know, we just launched JotForm apps back in November, and we have big things on the horizon this year as well. But between those big releases, the teams are still hard at work on new features, new improvements, new developments to our existing suite of product. And these are usually very closely aligned with the requests that we've seen from you in the user community. So these sessions will be a way for us to not just give you the latest and greatest, but also an update on your FAQs or your most frequently requested features. So hopefully you've grabbed a uh, coffee or some popcorn uh, and you're ready to walk away from your other responsibilities for a few minutes. Kicking off the series today, I'm gonna be sharing two new things with JotForm tables. Tables is our spreadsheet database hybrid that collects all of your form data into one single location where you can analyze it and report on it and uh, do whatever you need to do with it. And since I am trying to keep this brief, I'm going to jump right out into tables now. Um, so I am starting here logged into one of my tables already or logged into my account. One of my tables pulled up and um, what we're looking at here is a table of all of the one-time donations that my charity, Cookies for Koalas, has received. Now, there are a few ways you can get into tables. Probably the easiest is to look for the drop uh, the drop form logo uh, at the left upper left-hand side of the screen, and there's a drop-down menu there that you can use to navigate anywhere within JotForm. So that's how I've gotten into tables today. And when you're in one of your tables, each column is one field from your form and each row is one full form response. So you can see here in this donation table, we have you know donor names, email addresses, how they've donated, how much they've donated, you know, and on and on, if they'd like a receipt, et cetera. So I mentioned that you can use tables to report on and analyze your data as well. So you can always add to what you see here and it won't show up on your forms. So for example, if somebody mails in a donation and I wanna add that here for tracking purposes, I can add a row and manually enter all of that data. And I can also add columns as well. And I'm gonna start here because I want to start with an update to one of our action buttons, which you can see I have three in place here already, the last three columns here. So uh, action buttons we rolled out last fall. These are a way for you to be able to take action on your form responses directly from tables. So there's no need for you to have to have multiple tabs open and manually transfer data. You don't need to download anything to email it off to somebody. You don't even need to go out of tables to another job form tool. So in this case, what I've added here is a send receipts column or send PDF column that I've renamed send receipts that I'm using to send a receipt to my donors for their records. I'm using a send data to other apps button that I'm using to send my donor records to constant contact, or they can automatically be added or updated. And I have a send email button added here where if something's incomplete or we have any questions for a donor, my colleague Annabelle can follow up with them. I just need to hit that button to send her an email where she'll know what to do from there. So when we rolled out action buttons, uh, you know, there are a couple of other action buttons. One of those is to send a form. And when we rolled out action buttons, that would send a blank form. But one of the most requested features we got for action buttons, if not the most requested, the one that I saw the most at least, um, was the ability to pre-fill a form and send it out from here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we do have some prefill options from our forms as well, but this would bring that functionality into tables. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that now. So in this case, again, what we're seeing here are my one-time donations, but there's a field on the one-time donation form where my donors can request information about making other types of donations. So for those who are asking about making automatic donations, these folks in orange here, I'm going to follow up with them by sending a recurring donation form that's already populated with their contact information. To add a column at any point, you're gonna go all the way to the right of your table and look for this add button. 
And here you can see you can choose from options in three, uh, four different tabs, you know, basic formulas. You can connect to another form or templates. And here we have our action buttons in that third tab. So again, so far I have the send email, send data to other apps and send PDF, and I'm going to add this send form button. So I'll just click on that and hit next. Anytime you add a column, the next step will be to name the column. So we'll call this send recurring donation form. Hit next there. Then you'll select from your forms what form you want to send. And there is a search bar here where you can narrow it down. So I'm selecting this cookies for koalas recurring donation form. And you can see when I do that, that some of the fields automatically get pulled in. So what you see here is that the form fields on the recurring donation form that I'm sending out are going to be automatically pulled in from the table column, uh, the table columns of the same name. So first name, last name, and email address will all get pulled into the new form that we're sending off. If I didn't want to include one of those, I could just hit the trash can icon. And if anything doesn't map automatically and you want to manually carry it over, you can hit that add more fields button and add in whatever fields or fields you'd like to add from there. This looks good for my purposes. I'm going to hit next. Then I'll determine where this form should go. So in this case, I want to send to donors to the folks who've already filled out my form. But you could send this to anybody. You could send it to a colleague or you know whomever you need to. Um, but to send it to the donor, I'm going to choose from the fields that I have in my table, which is what you see in this drop down menu. I will select email, and that is the donor's email address coming from this table. I can include a default message along with that. You know, here's the form you requested, whatever I'd like to send. And then I can click create column. And now that column is created, that button is added. So all I need to do to follow up with those donors is hit that button from here on out and that will send that form over. So now when they receive the form, they will get an email with a link to the form and um, you know they don't need to have a job form account to fill it out. It will look like this. So in this case, you can see Zinnia, her first name, last name and email address are already included. Um, you know, there are, uh, again, there were a ton of use cases here, a lot of interest, but really, you know, people don't love filling out forms. So the easier you can make it for them, the better. And uh, in this case, ideally, this is even leading to more donations on my part. You know, this is a pretty short form, but it's still making things easier for the donors. All they need to do is select how much they want to donate, how often, and then they'll hit submit, which will take them to PayPal or whatever I have set up here to collect the money. And um, then they're good to go. Uh, so again, that's just one use case, but you know, many, many, maybe infinite other possibilities here. Maybe you're a camp where parents are registering their children with one form and you want to approve that before you ask for payments. So you want to send the send payment form with their contact information already included. Or you know, maybe you're a tattoo artist where folks are signing up for an appointment using a form and they also need to sign a, a liability waiver or consent form before they come in. So again, you're sending them that with their information already pulled in. Whatever the case may be, um, if you have use cases, uh, I'd love to hear from you about what, what, how you're using this. Uh, we're very excited about this new feature and, and we hope you are too. So the second thing that I wanted to talk about today is our brand new assignee feature. And for those of you with collaborative workflows, this allows you to, again, assign those, you know, these form responses or your data to the folks that you're working with, whomever they might be. Again, they don't need JotForm access to be able to see this data. And again, you don't need to leave tables to do that, not even for another JotForm tool. So again, makes things pretty easy and seamless on, um, on everybody's part. So in this case, um, basically what I'm using the assignee column for here is that I want to make sure that every donor gets followed up with so we can just say thanks, we received your donation. You can read more about the charity here, you know, just to keep the lines of communication open, you know, thank them for what they're doing for our charity. And it doesn't matter who responds, I just want to make sure that somebody handles it so I'm randomly assigning to my colleagues but you may be a sales team taking leads from a form and you need to assign to the most appropriate regional salesperson, or you know, maybe you are a, a physical therapy clinic where people are requesting appointments and you want to match them to the most appropriate clinician. So you'll assign to the clinician to follow up from there. You know, again, all virtually endless possibilities for this as well. To use this column, you'll first need to look for the share button or you'll have to share, but the easiest way to do that is with 
the share button here. Uh, and uh, when you click on that, you'll have your various share options. Um, you know, a couple of different ways to invite people. You have options of whether they have read only or edit access. And again, when they, uh, when you assign, when you share this, they will receive an email where they can access your table. And here you're saying, you know, they can either only have read only access or they can also edit the table as well. Uh, and once you have shared, you'll see here, I've shared with a few of my colleagues uh, if you click on that, then you can change the access levels if you need by clicking the drop down here. And you also have the option to revoke access if you need to, if they leave the company or the workflow and you want to make sure that they can't still get into it. Um, and if they didn't get the invitation, you can resend an invitation here as well. Uh, for the assignee column specifically, first, of course, you'll add in the column. So same as the other column that I just added. In this case, you'll see assignee under the basic here. Both of these new options are tagged with new, so it makes them pretty easy to find if you want to go play around with them after this webinar and see how they work. And from there, uh, all you'll need to do is click into a blank cell. You'll see an add button and you can add the assignee or assignees that you'd like to assign this to. If you need to remove anybody's access at any time, same thing. You'll just click on the cell and look for the little X next to their name and you can remove uh, you know, that that's been assigned to them. If you would like to review this in a visual way, at the top of each column header is a drop down menu where you have actions specific to that column. And for each column, you have the option to summarize the data in that column with a chart. So in this case, I can see you know, who's been assigned what or how many donors each of my colleagues has assigned to them. And I can see, you know, Annabelle has five, Art has four, Lainey has three. If I'm trying to keep things even, I probably want to send the next person over to Lainey to ask her to follow up so nobody is getting overtaxed. Um, you can also change the layout of the, uh, the visual here, and you can download it as well. So you can do that again with any of the columns here. And if it would benefit you to see that same visual representation for the entirety of your data, Super easy to add that in as well. You'll just go to add tab at the top here, look for reports, choose what you want to report on. So I'm choosing the same data source, the same table we're looking at now. Choose how you wanna set up your report from, from the start. And then you have a, a beautiful report of your data that again, includes all of those visuals. So you see the same exact thing I was just showing you, but you see it for every other piece of data as well. So that is all I wanted to share with you today. For these sessions, unfortunately, we won't have time for Q&A. Uh, but again, I would love to hear your feedback if you have use cases that you want to share with us, if you have any questions, or if you tried one of these out and it didn't work quite the way you had hoped it would, please feel free to email me directly. I'm morgan at jotform.com, M-O-R-G-A-N. Uh, I will be happy to respond to you, or if I can't help you, I'll forward you to somebody who will follow up with you shortly. And the only other thing I wanted to mention is that if that prefill option that I showed first is interesting to you, we have some improvements rolling out to our prefill options, some new features in prefill coming out um, momentarily. You'll see more about them in the newsletter that we have coming next week. And we will be having a webinar about that in two weeks from today. So I will be presenting on March 3rd about all of the new prefill options. Uh, you can sign up for that on our website, or you'll see it in the newsletter as well. And I would love to see you there for that. So uh, again, just want to thank you all for joining today. And again, feel free to get in touch and hopefully we'll see you at the next one. All right. Thanks. Bye.